Oh, this shirt looks so awesome. Yes, hello, folks. Welcome back, and I'm the one, the only, oh, Hobo Tom. And two good things happened today. So I have to share that with everyone. I got both of my t-shirts from Pro Wrestling Tees, the one. The Macho Man shirt I'm wearing right now, the old school 1985 one. This is a, the exact color I wanted. This is amazing. The other one I'll wear uh, some other time. And I got good news from my employment. Yes. 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 Um, I'll be getting my unemployment. And that's always a good thing. So that means... Ah, well, I'll still be doing YouTube because I still want to get monetized for that. But I don't have to push as hard. Uh, remember, I think this is the week I'm taking off a little bit. Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's not really like take off. Can I read my predictions? And, oh, I have a bunch of people to thank. I'd like to thank all the people that watched the Rebellion show that I live streamed. Thank you very much. Um, and now some specifics. Melissa Craig, a new subscriber. Melissa Craig, not only did you win once, you won twice because you got that six count. Let's see your hamburger. You, sir, are a master of the air guitar.
Let's see here. I will say this. Let's see here. I'm from Big Bep. You, sir, are just carrying around that briefcase boombox. Inixus, you can crawl right out of here. Pentagram Jr., you sir always win by dirty pin. Colt Cabunny, you sir a member of the El Generico Band. And naked snake. I know, I have a very dirty mind. But you, sir, holy shit. And those are all the people, especially, again, double thanks to Melissa Craig for her subscription. Everyone else I kind of chatted with on Discord. But again, it's always good to see the Discord during AEW's Alive and Well. And of course, with that being said, especially for AEW, it's time to talk about some AEW Pro Wrestling. They are still advertising for the, I think it's still the end of May, the Double or Nothing pay-per-view. I don't know if that's going to be in Las Vegas, or it's, it's going to be one of three one of three places. It's either going to be like it was supposed to be in Las Vegas. It might be in Georgia because Georgia, I think, this Friday says get back to work. Son of a bitch, get back to work. We're fired. So it might be in Georgia. Or, remember, Florida call said that WWE is a essential or an essential business. So, therefore, AEW might also fall under that broad umbrella and become an essential business. And they could have it at Daly's Place. They could have it at Jacksonville Beach if they really wanted to make things interesting. They could come down to Daytona. Same, uh, yeah, they really don't sell out in Daytona either. Daytona Beach would be pretty impressive. Orlando, maybe at the M I don't know, maybe at the Amway Center in Orlando. They have nice big seats. And again, if they want to keep people distances apart, just, just honestly sell every other seat. It's not the best, but hey, it's something. So... With all that being said, let's talk about what happened tonight on at AEW. So we start off our matches. We have 
Oh, and I was shocked not to see Carl Machine Gun Anderson there. But yeah, I have my Carl Machine Gun Anderson shirt, I think, in the wash now. So I'm I'm I was just so happy to get my t-shirts from Pro Wrestling Tees. Thank you so much, Pro Wrestling Tees. You made at least one customer very happy during this this very, very trying time. So thank you very much for getting me my order. But I want to say I ordered this on the 9th. I know it takes time to make and to ship. So thank you again very much, Pro Wrestling Tees. You got a free plug. I don't care. Uh, might be the plug you want to hear. It might not be. Who knows? But you just got it anyway. ProWrestlingTees.com. Got amazing merch like this as well. They'll probably say never talk to us again. Who knows? Uh, so let's start off the match. Uh, Sammy Guevara opens up. Again, Chris Jericho still on commentary, which is good. Chris Jericho is amazing on commentary. Chris Jericho has cemented himself something after his body breaks down from pro wrestling. Uh, let's see here. So ringside, so the first match was Sammy Guevara taking on Darby Allen. This is for the TNT title. Ringside, Sean Spears has gone full fan. He made his own sign and brought it to ring. Oh, this is the one thing that is so much more exciting about AEW. At least they have... And I thought I saw Zicky Dice there, too. I don't know. They are from... I wonder if they're... I wonder how close to Atlanta... I wonder... I know it has to be a sports facility. I just don't know which one would be close to Atlantic. Because, again, we saw um, Danny Jordan, the original bad girl, Pineapple Pete. Uh, I swear it was Zicky Dice. Uh, the one referee guy was there. Who knows? Uh, so Spear brought his own homemade side. That was pretty cool to see. Uh, starts off, Sammy Scrivar just jumps Darby Allen, beats him up. And then he sets up a ladder, and Chris Jericho answers that question. Why do we have barricades? And Chris Jericho says, we have barricades so we can set up ladders between the ring and barricade. Uh, he threw Darby Allen into said barricade, which took out the ladder because I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the ladder. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Well, swerve there in that song. Uh, and then Darby Allen got on top of the got placed on top of the ladder, and wow, Sammy the Guevara hit a splash. That splash did not go the way it intended. Because, honestly, look what happened. So you have the ladder be between the, the, the barricade and the ring. Darby Allen on top of said ladder. Sammy Guevara at the very top. Sammy Guevara jumps on the ladder and literally like bounces off onto the floor. That ladder no sold. And they must have gotten the good fiberglass ladders too. Because that just like sprung poor little Sammy Guevara back off him. There's a ladder just no sold, and literally the ladder did not budge. That looked painful. And then Sammy Guevara goes right at to ring the bell. Sammy Guevara goes right for the pin. Uh, Darby Allen, he begins to pull the boot off the foot of Darby Allen and just attacks that exposed foot. Again, it's never a real wrestling match until there's a headbutt to the ankle. Just like Delirious would have wanted. Although Delirious used to do it to the wrist, but that's okay. So again, it was something different. It's kind of cool. Uh, I, I, li I like these new novel spots, spots they're putting in. It's, it, is, it feels almost to some degree like an old NWA match. Like in the WCW from probably the 80s or even going back to WCCW. And AWA kind of in like the late 70s, early 80s. Kind of anything and anything went. Uh, let's see then. So Sammy. Uh, oh no. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Sammy Guevara did a springboard cutter off the one foot. Because remember, he has the one foot exposed. The one still in the boot. Then Darby Allen really went to work over that leg and ankle lock. He probably did the ankle lock probably the most efficient way. Not by standing, because he can twist around, but got down on the mat, kind of laced up the leg, put the ankle lock in, 
Uh, he almost could have done done a knee bar too from that position. Uh, Sammy Vera again just he got a busted lip. Darby Allen had a busted nose. Uh, they're bleeding. Everyone's bleeding, baby. Oh, I'm so happy. Thank you, my boy Cody Rhodes. Everyone's bloody. So good, so good pro wrestling, baby. And then let's see here. So can they go back to the outside? Darby, uh, Sammy go, escapes the outside. Darby Allen just launches himself into the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. I am the barricade. Coo -coo -coo -choo. I don't know why he's, Darby just launches himself until like does dives because he always misses. And Chris Jericho doesn't know what su suicido means. Because he's even though he has a perfect understanding of Spanish, he doesn't know that. But that's okay. Uh, eventually gets back in the ring. Darby Alley kind of does that weird last supper, that kind of leg lock submission pin attempt. Came on, no, it was okay. Uh, I'll tell you what, this was a really fun match. It started off really hot. Got me excited for the whole show. That's always a good thing. This, folks, was a surf and turf match. Then we have Matt Hardy at the compound, and he begins to mock uh, Sammy Guevara, says he's going to put him into a meat grinder and make Mofongo out of him. Yes! I haven't had Mofongo. I've oh, wait a sec. I haven't had Mofongo in a while. Ooh, I should get some Mofongo sometime. That's a great place. The Taco Shack has amazing Mofongo. And I think you get a huge pile of food for like six bucks. That and a can of soda. Magnifique! So, <laughs> When Matt Hardy mentioned Mofungo, I just broke out laughing. Then we had Alan Angels taking on Kenny Omega. This is not a good showing for Kenny Omega. I mean, this is some guy from probably the NWA came out. I think, I don't think he's the referee. The referee is the guy with the kind of man ponytail. But this is not a good look for Kenny because this guy, Alan Angles, actually gave Kenny a match, and he starts off with a leg, leg kick. Kenny Omega, again, very classic mat wrestling. Uh, there's a chain combination and, and those chop, chain counters and then the chops to punctuate it by Kenny Omega. However, Allen did take take Omega down, and then he pulled a senton on him. Uh, Allen pulled the ring apron up and over and put it into the ring. Kenny, of course, not being the smart person, and Chris Jericho even said, that's genius. And I'll tell you what, I'm giving Alan Angles all the credit, Alan Angels all the credit for doing this. He pulled the, the apron into the ring, so it's laying, so it's kind of now in the ring, and it exposes all, all the inner workings and uh, frame of the ring. He's on the outside. Kenny Omega steps on top of the apron. He just did a whoop, and literally pulled the ring apron from underneath the feet. Of Kenny Omega. He made Omega actually look kind of stupid. Um, in this match, the jobber really looked good. Uh, Chris Jericho did mention uh, his Tokyo Dome match with Kenny Omega. It's always good to see them reference their work. It's always fun to have a, a, a wrestler as the announcer. You get to hear a lot of stories. You get to hear some more technical things. Especially in today's day and age where they're allowed to talk more about what they've done in the past. It's not, oh, it has to be in WWE. Especially with AEW, it doesn't have to be just an AEW, but they can reference New Japan. We've wrestled in the Tokyo Dome before. Oh, t even Tony Giovanni said, if you want to see a great match, watch that match. It's promoting the wrestlers, and the wrestlers are, are in this certain promotion now. So again, when they when the wrestlers get promoted, their AEW gets promoted. It makes sense. And this, um, Kenny Omega hit the V-Trigger. The jobber uh, got in a couple more shots. Then he got into a uh, power bomb, such power uh, gut wrench, power bomb, and a V trigger. Kenny Omega picks up the win, but he really didn't look strong for this match, though. And I don't know where Hangman Adam Page is. Is he back in West Virginia? Wait a second. There's no way in West Virginia to get coronavirus, except for his horse, maybe. I don't know. But uh, this match, Kenny Omega did not look great. It was a ham sandwich of a match.
And then we had a little promo by Scorpius Sky. I told him, like, well, I had chronic back issues I, when I started pro wrestling. I'll come back to it and see what happens. Uh, back issues don't, mir- don't miraculously cure themselves. It's just if you let the body will heal itself over time, it's just a constant abuse. Again, the one, one reason why I never wanted to be a pro wrestler is not so much the physical aspect of it, but then you have to go to your other job that day and then, and then go and then go to uh, uh, for practice real job real practice and wrestling practice is rough like I think I used I, I kid I would kid with people it's like yeah there's being in shape then there's being in wrestling shape especially at the amateur level the it's a huge difference at the pro level starting off in the indies unless you're really something fantastic you're getting like 50 bucks a match it might be more back in the day it used to be like 50 bucks you have to work another job I was going to school at the time so it's like is it really worth it yeah it's fun and great but and then there and then remember you're only one bad bump away from from being done for pro wrestling for good uh, you have the extreme case. You have uh, a Drozovich. Uh, a Droz puke. Got paralyzed by D'Lo Brown off a basic power bomb. Um, so that's the one extreme. And then you have the other extreme. I think Hulk Hogan actually shrunk a few inches. So all the leg drops actually compressed his spine. So all, all these things just kind of keep on adding up. And I know I would want to do stupid stuff like do flying moonsaults. So I know I'd, I'd really hurt myself. I did hurt myself once doing a moonsault. One time I did a moonsault, folks. It was so fun to do, though. My friend was down there at the bottom. Poor Diamondback Jack Maverick. He saw me coming for a moonsault. His eyes got big and saw his life flash before his eyes. He said, I never saw anyone roll all the way to the other corner faster than that. Of course, that didn't have me to land on anyone. anyone, And I fell wrong and broke my wrist. And, well, that was stupid of me. That's okay. Again, I, I left that day so, some bruises around the ribs. Them ropes hurt too. Taking a bump actually hurt less than running the ropes. It's funny then. Um, okay, so that's that was Sor- Scorpio Sky. Uh, Dustin Rhodes says, if I can't beat this twerp, Kip, keep, I'll, I'll paraphrase it. If I can't beat this twerp, Kip Sabian, I'm retiring. And then beat elite, beat, beat elite. Showed a highlight of their 200th episode. And I'll tell you what. Doing that Canadian destroyer from the springboard into the pool. That's not pro wrestling. That's not work. That just looks like fun. I know there's the videos of Randy Orton RKOing his kid when his kid tries to jump in a pool. That just looks fun. I think there's a video of his wife actually RKOing Randy Orton into a pool. That looks fun. There's the one death, uh, Japanese death match. Uh, Mike Awesome power bombs someone to the pool. That actually, that one aspect of the match, that looked fun too. And then this match was actually really good too. I won't upgrade that. That's a that's a better match than it was. Jimmy Havoc taking on Orange Cassidy. Havoc jumps Orange Cassidy. He just begins to beat him. Let me tell you all the things he did to Ar- Orange Cassidy. First of all, he took his jacket off. He took his, his um, he pulled his jacket off, where his arms were stuck, and he just began punching him, almost like reverse hockey fight style. Then he started to choke him with a jacket. And Chris Jericho's like, "Oh, I like this guy. He's doing smart things." Chris Jericho is amazing on commentary, by the way. If I haven't said that before. Uh, then there was then he then he took his shirt off, and just chops the bare chest. And then started to choke him into the choke him into with the shirt. That was also great. Threw him into the barricade. The atomic drop on the guardrail. Uh, just did a, a back. Uh, he went to chop him when Orange Cassidy was leaning in the post. Orange Cassidy ducked. He just slapped him right in the back and then just eye poked him. So don't you do that to me, boy. Uh, Cassidy eventually uh, got. Got hooked up though, and and up to this point it was all havoc. Again, havoc got him in the ring. Uh, Jimmy havoc got him in the ring. Just st- stepped on his hands. Cassidy starts to get fired up, but then havoc makes his comeback. Havoc makes his comeback. 
the heel makes his comeback. Uh, it, it's a rainmaker, then goes into a jujigatami, and then starts doing wrist locks. And those wrist locks look like they hurt. It's very British style, joint manipulation style stuff. Uh, the, then he hits, then again, he begins to bite the hands of Orange Cassidy. He shoves Orange Cassidy's hands in his pocket and just unprotected shots the face. It's smart. If you're just going to sit there with your hands in your pockets, you're going to get hit in the, in the nose. Okay. Uh, Cassidy didn't make his comeback, though, did a drop kick. Nails his Celta Roll DDT, his lazy splash. And he actually had a Superman punch, too. And then Penelope Ford kind of steps on in. <coughs> Slaps at Orange Cassidy. Uh, Chuck T tried to sweep the legs off Penelope Ford, but she just does a split on the apron. That's, that's still amazing how women can do split. I know they're built differently down there, but still, I don't care what they say. I, I've known some very unlimber women in my times. It's still hard for women to do split unless they're not trained to do it. And then kind of like a weird setup roll. It was a pinning combination. It's like, how do you describe it? It's like you're setting up for the calf crusher, but then you finish in a crucifix. It's almost like a standing llama heister is what it's like. And so Orange Cassidy wins by like the way in which he won. I'm upgrading the smash. This was a good, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um. That's a good surf and turf match. And the thing is, Jimmy Havoc, yes, he did do the dirty heel stuff, but he didn't have to bring out any weapons. There was no need for a staple gun or stuff like that. Uh, then there was the MJF. He's, he was by his huge palatial house, and he had his whole arm in a cast and said he's suffering from a hangnail. That's why you haven't seen him. Then we had poor Lee Johnson taking on Wardlow. And this is actually the way a squash match should go. If you're going to go against a jobber and you're a known wrestler, this is the way it should go. Wardlow just starts off with a knee to the gut. He tried to do a gorilla press the first time. No, Lee Johnson fights, over, fights out of that. I don't mind the jobber against the superstar if, if they can, if it looks like they're actually trying. Lee Johnson was actually trying. He didn't do much because he just got destroyed but it looks like he actually tried the other guy kenny omega just got beat up i don't want to see kenny omega get beat up i want to see kenny omega dominate a non-name wrestler wordlow did that he, he wordlow did this right and i can't wait to see here because i think jim Cornette would even agree with me so you know what War this is the way to book wordlow for now um, he loses against top guys, but it's a heck of a match in a steel cage against Cody Rhodes. He has to fight a jobber and destroys jobber. Jobber, yeah, he, he got out of the gorilla press once. Didn't get out of it. He didn't get out of it the second time because he got gorilla press body slam. And then he just did like two toss suplexes and then did like a spinning F5. And thank you, Lee Johnson. Collect your $50 and get out of here. But this is the way you should the monster and to make him look good makes the other guy look like he's actually trying though it's not a it's not a total demolishing but it's it's just a step beneath it the one guy tried he got out of the one move he did try and getting on that one move just made Wardlow mad and that makes sense this was a good cheeseburger of a match Brody Lee recruits someone. I have no idea who he recruited. I don't know. I just know that the one guy was in front of his computer. His girlfriend just dumped him, which makes me feel like caca. He was a potential star collegiate athlete until something happened. And you just see him. Well, I don't have a beer bottle because tomorrow is my, my beer drinking day. This is my adult beverage of choice. But he's just there drinking his beer. Mm-hmm. Searching for the dark order on the keyboard. He's depressed. His girlfriend dumped him. He lost his heist. He lost his all his collegiate accolades because of a, a football injury in high school. 
This girl dumped him. He's stuck watching um, YouTube. That's right. At home, drinking a beer while listening to the message his girlfriend left him. Saying, you're a nice guy. Oh, you never want to hear your girlfriend. You're not, you never hear one. Oh, you're a nice guy, but... March of death. Then Justin Law versus Brody Lee. Justin Lee's alive. That's it's good to see, I guess. This was this again. This is another just. This is a pure squash. In this match, Justin Law just showed up, ate three chops, a super kick, a head and neck suplex. Literally described by like a DDT suplex. Half and half suplex, a deep six, and then just nailed him with a lariat, and that was it. Salute to Justin Law. You got in the ring. You didn't try, but you got in the ring. Again, this is just a pure squash and any first. So with this, I think this was done in, with a weight room. I, I got there my thirty my 30 minute limit. So I had to start over. Oh, I did not time it correctly. That's okay. Um, that's because uh, I think it was Chuck T. A Trent Bray was cutting a promo. Chuck T was in the background. He had like a chain around his neck. Like kind of, he looked almost like that. They're just ripping on Vince McMahon nowadays. Granted, that's easy to do, but still. And there was a bubbly bunch. Bubbly bunch. Um, they just had a dance off to make Sammy Guevara feel happy. And Sammy Guevara won a bottle of hand sanitizer that Chris Jericho had that he got from Walmart. The dog shows up. The Roomba's, in, the Roomba's there. That is what it was. Then the main event, we had Kip Sabian taking on Dustin Rhodes. A uh, very typical Dustin Rhodes match. It was... Uh, they, they didn't do that. Like, like, of course, Dustin Rhodes wanted to shake his hand. And Kip Sabian said, yeah. Kip Sabian's practicing his social distancing. What can I say? Uh, for the most part, it was a really classic wrestling match. A uh, very typical Dustin Rhodes match. All of his moves, the kneeling uppercut, uh, the off-the-ropes powerbomb, inverted atomic drop, things of that nature. Uh, Dustin can still run the ropes, although he, he looks to be blown up a little bit towards the end. He's like, oh. Like, this match felt awkward. Not that fight feel awkward but that like the timing's a little bit off awkward because there were moments where like I know one time I think Kip Sabian like ducked like a second or two too late for a back body drop and I think Dustin Dustin Rose just kind of said okay I'm just going to jump over you and do this there was another time the, the, the timing with Kip Sabian just seemed to be a little off and then Penelope, then of course, class Dustin Rhodes stuff. Uh, Penelope then grabs Dustin's foot. That stops him. Uh, Kip Sabian does a step over toe hold. Then there was the side rope, the, the um, side rope power bomb, which is pretty good. Again, inverted time and drop. And the bulldog. Um, Dustin was really selling a knee injury. I don't know if he's really injured or if he's just getting beat up. And he is like fifth. I think he's like. 50. If he's not 50, he's in his late 40s. He's a little bit older than me. So again, it's that body's breaking down. Uh, Kip Sabian hit the DDT. Then uh, Kip Sabian, of course, gets the attention of Aubrey Ed Edwards because he, he just started to punch punch um, Dust Dustin Rhodes a lot. So of course that allowed for Penelope Ford to try to interfere. But uh-uh. Brandy wasn't ha having any of it. Brandy speared Penelope Ford. And then Dustin Rhodes hit his code red, the Lucha Destroyer. Dustin Rhodes win. He's he gets his <laughs> he 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 won this match, but he gets to face Lance Archer next week. Good seeing you, Dustin Rhodes. Again, this was a good match. Kind of sp spotchy though. It had a botchy feel to it. Oh. <sighs> I'll say it was a ham sandwich of a match.
And that was AEW for you folks. Again, AEW's putting on quality stuff. Save that. I'll throw that all out tomorrow anyway. So that's it. Now there's only one more wrestling show this week, folks, and that's that's my review of SmackDown. I will remember this time to put my little pizza thing because it's a it's a bubble. Because I don't know. It might be a really short show on my part. I think they're going to do a 25-year review or 25-year celebration of Triple H, which kind of makes sense because at least it's a little break from stuff. So I just might like write down what happens. It might be one of the shorter shows I've ever short review shows I've ever made. I think. So uh, although you never know, they might change that. Might say, "Well, we want Triple H in this part." Oh yeah, he thought that was good. Wash my son-in-law. And then I'm off Saturday and Sunday. Monday I'm back with Raw. Tuesday's going to be part two of Rebellion. And I've already made my predictions about that. I'll be live streaming my, my R&R &R &R with a little bit of wrestling. Every so often I can show like really cool stuff that happens. Wednesday's AEW. Thursday I am off. And Saturday and Friday's going to be SmackDown again. So without these pay-per-views, and then I think the next pay-per-view is going to be May 10th. That's going to be interesting. I'll be doing a live stream about that. So we'll see what happens, folks. You can never quite tell. I'd like to thank, especially all those people I mentioned before, I'd like to thank you, my YouTube audience, for watching. Uh, be safe. Again, if you're going to have the adult beverage, baby. Enjoy it responsibly. I'm just staying at home. Um, I have to process. I have to edit, process this video, video games, and post this video. So again, be safe. And who knows? Maybe this 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 